Hey guys, it's uh, Editing Sarah here. I really want to apologise because uh, when I was down visiting Vanda, we did record, I think, four episodes um, with Vanda guesting to talk about witch stuff, which I definitely still want to share with you because I think there are some really fun moments in there and we had a look at some interesting uh, and different things. However, unfortunately, we were using um, my mic, but in a room that really wasn't set up that well for recording and also using Vanda's quite old version of Audacity, which has somehow ended up with things being a little bit choppy and the audio not being as, you know, average as it usually is. I'm not going to say it's usually good because it's not, but, you know, it is a little bit worse. I've tried to cut out the worst moments of that, but unfortunately some of them still remain. Some little bits of it might be a little bit hard to hear, and for that I really apologise. But I did still want to share them with you, and uh, if this is the first episode you're listening to, rest assured that this isn't the normal audio quality of the podcast. Uh, it's just unfortunate that uh, it was a slightly bigger room than normal and the acoustics were not that great. Uh, but I did still want you to be able to hear some of the things that we talked about and uh you know have some fun with you guys so uh with that in mind here is the episode hi everyone and welcome back to witch fix today i'm going to be doing a very different thing to what normally happens which is just me talking to myself like an insane person for 30 minutes because founders here hi and we just watched a film which for some reason i assumed we have both seen because i've seen it many times and we watched it together the first time but i think because we were like 12 Vand has since forgotten what happened in the movie. I have an interesting combination of sleep issues, memory issues, and that film was first watched at a sleepover. Yeah, so, fair. to the best of my recollection, I watched the first 20 minutes of it, and then I guess I fell asleep? But my memory is hazy, and my sleep is irregular, so it could be that I woke up at various points throughout the film, but I've seen it now. Yeah, that's the, the that was all thing. new to you. <laughs> <laughs> The film we're talking about is Sleepy Hollow, which I initially wasn't going to review because I feel like it's quite a well-known film with a witch in it, but as the preceding conversation shows that not everyone has seen it, so therefore I feel justified in talking about it now. So Sleepy Hollow is a Tim Burton film. It's probably the last Tim Burton film made before he completely slithered up his own rectum, <laughs> um, which means that it is watchable and uh, that the Danny Elfman music is not Danny Elfman up Tim Burton's ass. It's quite crowded in there. Uh, as it is not in here. Um, so it has a number of witches in it, and we're going to talk about the plot a little bit. But just generally, in overview, what was your knowledge of this film before we watched it, aside from the fact that you couldn't remember that you'd seen it? Yeah, my my knowledge of it before was obviously there's the legend of Sleep, the Headless yeah. Horseman and Sleepy Hollow. And there's the Disney version. Yeah, the, the I haven't seen the Disney version either, but I've seen selected clips from it. It's cool. Because uh, the Disney version was actually a collection of short stories, I believe. Yes. So, like, I think I've seen some of it, but I don't know. In terms of this one, I knew it was a Tim Burton film. I knew it had Johnny Depp in it. That's kind of a, a good yeah, guess. Going like, all the first I think back. I had it remembered what I knew of the aesthetic to be much more kind of more Tim Burton, like yeah. where he got to like um, more kind of Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd. Uh, I know he didn't do. Uh, Dark Shadows, but that kind of thing. Did he not? Because he had the bottom card. Maybe he did. He did, because we looked at the Wikipedia Oh, yes, page, yeah. I, I presume that he didn't, because it's... it's like doing a review of the Manchurian <laughs> kind of it. Okay, <laughs> so, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is a story from the 1800s, and is basically a story about a kind of love triangle between a very superstitious school teacher called Ichabod Crane, someone called Brom, who's like the village hero, and Katrina Van Tassel. All these characters do appear in the Sleepy Hollow movie, but whereas the original story is basically them, like basically Brom scaring Ichabod Crane away to the point where he like disappears and is presumed murdered by the horseman, or maybe by Brom, we don't know. This film is very different in that it's kind of a CSI movie mm. about solving murders and mystery. We begin the film in New York. We are introduced to Johnny Depp who is a man who is in the police force. I'm so good at summaries. Yeah. Um, <laughs> basically, he is the only man in all of New York who believes in science, whereas everyone else just believes in finding bodies in the uh, river means that they drowned. I will point out, it's it's not so much that he's the only person who believes in science, it's that he's the only person who believes in actually detecting stuff. True. Everyone else <laughs> seems to just be happy to like grab the nearest unfortunate and then shove him in a cell and go, well, he's 
totally did it. Yeah. Which is kind of on brand. It kind of reminded me of From Hell, which also has some stuff in it, when they're like, oh, Jews must be killing the prostitutes. Yeah. Because they just do things based on their prejudices. It, it doesn't ruin a movie for me, but there is a trope where it's like, here is a white man who is a young upstart in his career and is the only person who believes in forensics or germs or whatever new thing we've only just discovered and like they're seen as the weird one for believing in this thing that we know now was correct all along and i don't know why but it just like it makes me eye roll a bit <laughs> and i i think especially in the context of a film in which there is witchcraft where you know like people got persecuted for knowing what herbs do things like the idea of I'm a policeman who understands detective work and pathology, <laughs> and it just it I don't know. There's something about it that doesn't quite sit right with me. If, I think in this movie especially is tempered by the fact that when he actually gets to Sleepy Hollow, it's like oh shit, ghosts are real, yeah, and witchcraft, and my fact that I can somehow pour mysterious powder on the ground and it will tell me what kind of slash decapitated someone. Yeah. It, well, that basically seems like witchcraft. Also, Burn him. also, spoilers, it's helped by the fact that when he actually gets a chance to do the pathology, he's not very good at it. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's terrible. He basically, he's... We're jumping ahead. We'll, we'll get there yeah. eventually, to, the, to one of the many autopsy scenes. So, um, basically, it's sort of like the beginning of Hot Fuzz, where he's just making all the rest of the police look bad, and they don't like him. So they're like, you know what, go to this rural location to investigate a string of decapitations. And he's like, boy golly wow, I would love to do that. So Christopher Reeve sends him out, and then we get a really long credit sequence. Shouldn't be at the beginning of a movie, because this is not the 1960s, and we just put that at the end. But anyway, he eventually gets to the town and meets a cast of characters who are played by very recognisable British actors, which is quite nice. I yeah. Um, it did make and also it... Christina Ricci. <laughs> yeah, it did make it slightly weirder when Johnny Depp and Christina Ricci are doing their, like, vaguely transatlantic accents but still sounding pretty american compared to all of these very famous british people yes. uh, <laughs> these famous british people including michael gambon aka dumbledore the second and also miranda richardson aka queen mab from merlin which... so we meet all these random characters and we learn a little bit about the string of murders that have already occurred and johnny depp is very skeptical about the fact that a man with no head has been riding around on a horse cutting people's heads off, okay. as you would be, but he is incorrect, so, you know. I think the thing that, because uh, he gets called into this private meeting of the, the sort of the town leaders, like the judge and the magistrate priest and, and the, like, all the, like, important people Dumbledore. are just having a sort of a, having a brandy in front of the fireplace and call him into this secret meeting, and they're like, yeah, um, just so you know, it's a ghost that's doing these killings. And he's like, oh, no, it's not. And they're like, bitch, <laughs> Wait, it's a ghost. <laughs> we, we live in a haunted town. Yeah. We know these things. <laughs> and they tell him the story of the ghost, um, which is basically that he was a Hessian mercenary in the Civil War and that they cut his head off because he just ran around killing people because he was crazed with bloodlust. Uh, they cut his head off with his own sword and then buried him in the woods and that he's like haunted the town ever since. Also, the headless horseman is played by Christopher Walken, but Christopher Walken by way of Danny DeVito's The Penguin. <laughs> because he has a very pointy fang like And they tell him this story and it's similar to the story in the original story. It says story a lot. It's all still meaning. Um <laughs> and in that in that he was a Hessian mercenary who got his head shot off by a cannon in the Revolutionary War. Uh, not the Civil War. No, the Revolutionary War. I think it was the Revolutionary War. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, because he, he got sent to, like, because the, um, the British. The Americans were being upstart, so they, the Germans sent some soldiers over so that they'd stay in line with the British. Which, which worked tremendously, yeah. obviously. Um, but yeah, I would kind of prefer the version where he got his head shot off by a cannon. That sounds dope. But kind of would make it hard for his skull to be intact later. It would. It would also make it difficult for an important plot point to arise. Yes. Because there's an important plot point that when he gets hunted down by the American soldiers, um, he like runs into the forest to hide, and there's two little girls gathering in the wood, and he's like, shh, little girls. And the little girls are like, no, and break twigs. And 
like the American soldiers come and find him and chop his head off. Yes. One of those girls is carrying a lot of firewood. One of those girls is carrying a twig. Yes. So the division of labour is not even no. there. But anyway, Johnny Depp gets told this spooky story. And then we cut to like this guy in a watchtower and he's looking out of this watchtower, which is basically like a small scout hut on a tall pole surrounded by chopsticks. And then the horseman comes and fires one shot at him with a musket and then is seen running through the woods away from the horseman because he left the very defensible position of being in a treehouse. Which raises many questions, one of which being why and the other one being how. I know, how did he get down like, and like run away? How, how did he climb down the ladder without getting his go around the scout hut on a stick and then run into the wood because surely the horseman would be between the wood and the watch post. Yeah, and also later on when there's like another murder, someone just fires a gun in the air and goes, MURDER! And he doesn't think to go like, I'm under attack! Maybe it was a like, if I call people for help, then they could also get decapitated. I don't want to blame the victim here, but he had it coming and he made all the wrong decisions. Yeah. Moving on. He is buried and... We meet his son, who's like 11. He wants to help Johnny Depp and basically be his Dr. Watson, but a child, uh, to help him avenge the death of his father, who was recently murdered because he was a moron. And then Johnny Depp is given the cryptic hint that of the four previous victims, there were actually five victims. But one of those victims is in the grave of one of the other ones. That was a really roundabout way of me saying that. (laughs) He basically says there are five victims in four graves, and Johnny Depp is like, I wonder what that could mean. And then proceeds to have the three men dug up. And then lastly, the woman who is probably pregnant. Like, I, I don't know how you don't instantly jump to that. I know that with all of these mystery and investigation type things, there's always something where the viewer knows they are watching a mystery. So they are in like problem solving mode. Like, whereas ooh, ooh. the people in the thing are slightly more stupid because that's probably slightly. how you would be in real life. Much like, more stupid. You, you're not in the comfort of your home going, aha, I, I know the I know the foibles of this particular genre. I think I know what's coming next. Like, I can understand that. But also, how do you not jump immediately to that's what that means? Yeah. I mean, at least dig up the woman first to see if you're yeah. right. I mean, that just saves him some digging. Not that Johnny Depp is doing any of the digging. No. There are some men. Anywho, so he takes the dead lady to, who has no head, to the doctor's house to like do an autopsy on her. And the doctor's like, but this woman is dead. And Johnny Depp's like, I know that, genius. And then he just proceeds to do an autopsy, except every time he, like, cuts into this poor dead lady, a massive gout of, like, bright reddish-orange blood. Like, like acrylic paint thickness yeah, blood. Yeah, like, like, unheated Heinz tomato yeah. soup just sprays into his face because although she's been dead for, like, days and buried, apparently she still has, like, arterial spray. Yeah, uh, like... I didn't really get that. No, it was, it was... Not only was that weird, but, like, then... So that happens on camera once, and then it cuts away to, like, outside of the doctor's, the house. doctor's house, and he comes out, and he's, like, covered in blood, and it's like... Aha, uh-huh, this I is funny. I don't think even someone who was alive would spray that much. <laughs> I know. It's, just, it's like, literally, like, he just rolled around in some soup. It's weird. But anyway, he catches up to the viewer, and is like, the widow of the village was preggers, and... That's significant. And also, the horseman stabbed her in the stomach to behead her on board Bailey, which is overkill. However, I've just realised something. Um, <laughs> so, he finds this out. He does not then, like, well, on screen anyway, as far as we know, continue to interview the guy who told him the widow was pregnant. Not or really. any of the other, like, important people of the town. Yeah, no, he forgets about that guy he, for a really yeah. long time. He forgets about all of them and the pregnant lady for a while as well. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's just sort of mentally shelved that in his mind palace. Uh, and then he goes on a little bit more of an investigation type thing. But at the same time, he's also kind of beguiled by Christina Ricci and is talking to her a whole bunch. And she seems kind of empty headed and fluffy. But like the more he talks to her, the more you get the idea that there's quite a lot of wit and intelligence like hidden beneath that very blonde exterior. So he eventually does go back to the guy who gave him that hint, except he goes back to him in a field in the middle of the night while that guy's trying to run away, so it's a good idea. After we've seen them have like a heated discussion, but like they're inside, we're outside, so we don't get to know what they say. There's just a lot of pointing. And wigs. And wigs. And I mean, I will point out that that was like 1700s gloves. It can't have been that thick. That was... Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it would have been really thick, but it's it's unusually thin and clear. Yeah, it's it's just yeah, very strange. 
So he catches up to him in a field and the shape of doom, which seems to appear every time the horseman's about to appear, just kind of run through bleating. It's it like it's something when the sheep are the smartest characters in the world. I love the sheep. Like the sheep I want are to like, have their babies. I know what's happening and I'm getting out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be in this movie. Um so they run away, then some CGI idea run away. And then guy who gave him a hint gets his head cut off, but not before he says that they didn't know what they were getting into and all this other stuff. Ominous, and and ominous stuff. stuff. So uh, Johnny Depp continues his investigation following this beheading, and I will say that the beheaded heads look great. Mm, they do, and the like the the dead bodies look they like, look great. believable. I like the stumps is, as well. Yeah. Like when he does his first little autopsy thing on a stump, it's like all like baggy around the edges, like it's actually been like mm. cut. It's not like a solid sausage of mm. person. It's a sentence yeah. I did not. Think also, I like on on the subject of things looking nice, uh, something I really appreciate is that they appear to have done. A lot of the special effects with a mix of like practical and older school film effects, mm. like you would have had in the old black and white films, um, and then like using CG to mostly for like ninety percent of the film, the CG is used very tastefully to sort of paint over the joins in physical effects and things like that, and it just gives it a kind of old fashioned feel. It is really, nice. and also a lot of the environments look kind of like they've got like a painted backdrop mm. in the background. There's a lot of really nice like costumes and a dour grey filter over it which is pretty nice um, and not like in certain later Tim Burton films where everything is just filtered to buggery yeah like we've just made looks... up all our actors with chalk yeah, and black markers it, just like it has a very pleasing softened look rather than a this is digital film and we just put an Instagram filter over it look yes um, so Johnny Depp continues to run around and it's at this point that Katrina's, that's Christina Ricci's other suitor, Brom, who has a very tiny role in this film considering he was one of the major characters in the story, um, decides to be a douche and he dresses up like the Headless Horseman, chases Ichabod and throws a pumpkin at him which knocks him unconscious and Ichabod has a cryptic dream sequence! Mm. Which I actually, for all that I hate dream sequences in books and most films, I do quite like these because they're a nice counterpoint to the quite sober they, drama. they make a nice visual counterpoint. They're very imagery-ish. Like, they are dream sequences that function like dreams in yeah. that there's, you can see which bits of them are related to truth and memory and things that actually happened and which of them are... Things that happened that day that have just got Yeah, like just like in. brains getting muddled up. Um, His mum has massive tits. Yeah, on. like, it, it's a very tit dress. Like, yeah. and the, the trend at the time was for, like, flat bodice and like, everything squished up but, but her bodice is open in that, yeah. in that second room it's it's, it's very weird stupid. so there's that and he's having these dreams and we're kind of getting the impression that his mum was a little bit into witchcraft because she like throws some flowers in a fire and draws some mysterious symbols and some ash and then flies into the air at one point so yeah not a wash with ambiguity um and then a very nasty dracula looking priest comes into the dream and um this dream sequence like happens like three times and reveals a little bit more each time so that's quite yeah, it yeah. well, it's uh, it's nice because like I think one of the reasons I tend to dislike dream sequences is when they don't really serve a purpose other than here's a weird bit we can put in, or like here are some scares that we can yeah. fit into the plot. So whereas these are like the character has certain memories that he's repressed, and that this place is and like that this place out. is bringing out of him, and that like serves a purpose, and you get to follow along with the. There's understanding also a really clever reason for this because later on uh, him and katrina take a ride out to the cottage that katrina lived in with her father and her mother um, when they were poor and had just arrived in the area and she's telling him all about how they lived in this cottage and that there's an archer carved into the fireplace and all this stuff and she is drawing in the ash so he is having a moment where he's thinking about the dream which i think distracts the audience from some quite important mystery clues that she's delivering in her dialogue because obviously you're thinking about the dream and the connection to mm. his mum, which I really like. Yeah. To fast forward a little bit through some elements of the plot, elements. Um, he continues his investigation. Various more people get their heads cut off, which is great to see. And uh, he ba basically kind of tracks down the source of the mystery. So being the fact that someone wants to inherit all of the first dead guy's money. So he was Van Garrett. 
when he was killed, his money went to, because of his new will, his new wife, who was the pregnant widow, so obviously she is then murdered, as is everyone who officiated the marriage or helped with the new will or knew of its existence, and then also a midwife in town, so you can kind of see the connection to the pregnant lady. And that Katrina's dad is the next in line for inheritance, so obviously Ichabod now suspects Michael Gambon, aka Dumbledore. Which Katrina isn't very happy about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does get at a certain point where, um, as with a lot of... I mean, I'm going to classify this as a murder mystery. It is. I think funny, it is. Yeah. Like, with a lot of them, you do get to a certain point where you're like, well, we're running out of suspects at this rate. Like, yeah. there's only so many named characters, and, like, at least two of you have the alibi of, we know that you were there when a when a murder happened, so we know you couldn't have been the one. Ah, yes, murdered. but we already know through the discovery of the Horseman's grave that his head is not buried with mm. him, and so Ichabod correctly surmises somehow that whoever has the head can control the Horseman. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if they were there at the time That's of the true. murder because they could have just told the Horseman. That is, but the point of running out of named characters <laughs> still very much yes, stands. That, that, that definitely still stands. As, as does the fact that. Um, Especially when, as Ichabod starts to suspect Michael Gambon, they like everyone runs into the church because the horseman starts coming, and they all run into the church and they realise he can't step foot on the holy ground. Woo! Yay, and then we're safe. the remaining like three conspirators, conspirators, and the doctor, like, the priest, and Dumbledore. Yes, um, the priest kills the doctor with a crucifix. With a crucifix, bashes by, him like, on the bombs. Him on the head, <laughs> which I know I wasn't probably supposed to find funny but it, it was, was quite funny was and i don't movie. think that would kill you there yeah. was like a little bit of blood but he he's dead and then michael gambon shoots the priest and his wig flies off and his wig flies off and then he like yeah, everyone turns on him because he's like you killed the priest in the church and he's like backing up the stairs with the gun going, going to stay back pit, stay like, back all of you i'll shoot you meanwhile the headless horseman is being very clever for someone without a head <laughs> i mean maybe he's not thinking with his head maybe, maybe. he's thinking with his evil soul full with of his gut <laughs> His gut. Thinking with his gut, he like takes the pointed end off the fence post and turns it into like a makeshift harpoon. And then harpoons Dumbledore. And harpoons him through the glass. Which window, looks great. Like that blood flies. Very out, impressive. Like. And like pulls him backwards and yanks him across the church grounds and out of the fence. Or rather just yanks him enough so that his head is outside yeah. of the boundary line. Uh, now your head isn't on the only ground. <laughs> Hacha. We have skipped over some important plot points. We have. Um unfortunate. So prior to this, Christina and Ichabod have had a fight about him thinking her dad's a murderer, which, you know, fair cop. So she's burned all of his evidence that he had accrued, and he has discovered under his bed a weird-looking pagan symbol, which looks like basically a pentacle with a bunch of shit drawn on it, uh, in purple chalk under his bed, which summoned a tarantula somehow. Don't know if they're native to New York. Did it summon it, or was the tarantula just there on holiday? The tarantula's just chilling under yeah. that bed, like. Anywho, he obviously now suspects that witchcraft is afoot and he has already encountered a witch in the woods who is a very spooky lady and let's just talk about her face. Yeah. Because that's where the CGI really kind of shit the bed. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's where they gave the CGI like a starring role and they really shouldn't have. Yeah. It's, it's no. So they go into a cave in the woods, they find a lady mysteriously shrouded in veils to the extent that she kind of looks like Bellatrix Lestrange, but or a Dementor, on like a bad face day. Uh, and she does a lot of stuff, she kind of squirts a bat full of blood into some moss and creates some smoke and is like, I'm summoning spirits from the other world, and Johnny Depp is like, okay, great. And then she jumps at him and her eyes come out and stalks and then her tongue is a big snake. Yeah. And, and then, it's like, blah, 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 blah. And then she talks in a creepy possessed voice. And tells him where the body is. Like well, yeah, where the body is the horse buried. buried. So that's something we skipped over. But yeah, he, he met this witch. And now he finds this thing under his bed. And he's like, oh my God, Katrina may have done this. Someone in the house has done this. And then at the church, lo and behold, just as Dumbledore is getting harpooned like Moby Dick, Katrina is on the floor in the church and she has drawn the same symbol in the same purple chalk. Which is, you know. An interesting decision. She has no fear of being burned. Yeah. She is fearless. Um, but then she quite, uh, like, passes out because, I mean, she's just seen her dad turn into a kebab, so fair. Busy day for her. Like, she only faints, like, twice in the film, and Johnny Depp faints, like, 900 times, yeah. so she deserves it. 
Um, but they put her in bed and they're like, oh, she's a witch. Let's tuck her in <laughs> and not put her in jail. And Johnny Depp's like, well, I mean, your dad's dead. Everyone who would put you in jail is also dead. So I'm just going to leave yes. because I can't deal with it. Basically, Johnny Depp, because he's in love with her, he doesn't want to believe that she did all this to inherit her father's fortune. He assumes and hopes that a dark spirit took possession of her. And so he decides to leave and go back to New York and I, I guess just continue trying to fight crime in an apathetic city. He also takes with him a small pocket-sized book of like spells, charms and signs of the spirit world, which Katrina gave him earlier on in the movie, which she said would protect him from harm and that he put into his breast pocket. So you know he's getting shot in that later. Yeah. Because that's how that works. Chekhov's small book. <laughs> Chekhov's <laughs> book of, a, of sufficient <laughs> thickness to stop an oldie tiny bullet, <laughs> which is 69 pages. So he gets in the carriage and is driving away, and as he's driving away, he sees the body of Katrina's stepmother. We skipped over this as well. You're oh, a bad yeah. influence on me. I'm sorry. Anywho, um, Katrina's stepmother had a big cut on her hand because she was getting all randy with the vicar and sliced her hand open and rubbed the resulting tomato soup all over his swaggy back, which was a delightful to experience. Um, but then she was gathering flowers, and she got approached by the horseman from behind with a big sword, and then Michael Gamble ran away and got harpooned. So now we're back in the room. As he's leaving town, he sees her body being carted into the doctor's house. I don't know why, because the doctor is dead. Yeah, I <laughs> guess that's just where they're putting the body. He's just like, <laughs> who's going to take care of them? When we, when we next get a doctor from the big city, he'll have a backlog. It'll be like, fine. why is my office full of weird soup? Like, <laughs> oh, that was the previous doctor. We forgot how to bury people. <laughs> Anywho, he sees the body being carried in and then has a little, like, Jonathan Creek kind of Poirot murder she wrote moment when, he, uh -huh. when he's like wait a minute I have seen something then he leafs through the little magic bullet stopping book and finds that the symbol that he saw in the church and under his bed is a symbol to protect a loved one from harm and that all Christina was trying to do what is her name in the film? Um, Katrina. Uh, Katrina. Katrina Katrina Christina I knew it was something that sounded very like Christina all Christina Aguilera is trying to do <laughs> is protect her dad fail and Johnny Depp, half fail from harm with her presumed witchcraft. So now we have two witches in this movie. We've got creepy old lady in the woods, who I love, with her like weird bat yeah. cave, and also Cretina Aguilera, who <laughs> Bettina, who is now like obviously doing witchcraft, which is cool and I like it. And I like the symbol, it's very cool. So he has the carriage turn around and go back into town. So he can examine the body that has been left in the doctor's office for no reason. To specify the body of the stepmom, because all the other bodies <laughs> yes. may also be left in the doctor's the, office. There's only two bodies there, but a lot more yeah. people have been killed recently. Like Michael Gambon is there, and also the stepmom. Maybe they're quite efficient at working through them in the scout heart on a stick, <laughs> <laughs> which never gets used again. Um, so he flips over the stepmother and is all like, "Aha! This cut was made after this woman was already dead." And then at exactly that moment, Christina Aguilera, who has woken up from her like despair nap is approached by her stepmother who is shock horror still alive because the body in the pile of bodies that we're not dealing with is actually the servant girl so then christina witchy faints again uh, <laughs> and how long have you been waiting to say that like since you started saying christina because <laughs> i realized there was a better pun oh um, my god <laughs> is christina for no, no. survey. <laughs> <laughs> puns are always the better pun um, <laughs> shut up, I make sense. <laughs> so Johnny Depp's like, oh no, I left the woman I have vaguely flirted with. The woman like I've had week. three conversations yeah. with and must now marry, which to and, be fair is basically how things work back. And who, like, I gave this present of like a little optical illusion magic trick thing to, but then had it again in the next scene, so I don't know if I actually gave it away or. I maintain he has 45. Right? Maybe. But yeah, so he's like, oh no, Christina. And so he's like, rides off with the horse, with the carriage still attached, which sounds like a stupid move. But then you realise that later on it comes in very useful. He knew he was going to need that yeah. for a chase scene. Uh, he rocks up to a windmill. I don't know how he knew they were going to the windmill. No, a very old, decrepit looking windmill. Like, yeah. it is the creepiest thing in town. So I guess if there's going to be a showdown. And also, it it's a there. Dutch town. Yeah. So obviously they have a windmill. Yeah. Which is apparently where they store the Everclear. Because it blows up <laughs> later, like fucking so, Billy O. Yeah. <laughs> if Billy O was full of dynamite. So why are you now doing? I this don't nonsense? know. 
Oh, I'm getting excited. I have been I think you're deposed. <laughs> um, anywho, ignoring that for a second. <laughs> yeah. He then rushes to the windmill, don't know how he knew how to go there, maybe he can smell the alcohol. He gets there just in time for Miranda Richardson, who is a goddess, to be explaining that she is one of the two twin girls who saw the Hessian being murdered in the woods, so therefore she knew where his head was buried. She and her mother, after her father died of this probably old timeyitis, got chucked out of their cottage, where they had carved the archer into the great to represent their family name and then he moved in michael gambon and his new family because the lord of the manor wanted someone who would actually do a job and her dead dad just wasn't it, i guess yeah so they had to go into the forest and her mum died and then the two sisters were just kind of on their own having witchcraft. learned witchcraft from their mum and her sister is the witch in the cave which i guess is why they cgi'd her face so we wouldn't see that it was presumably it, it just looks like miranda richardson with a bunch of cold sores yeah i think it is just the same Yes, they, yeah. they did. Um, so now she's really pissed and she wants to inherit the fortune that she feels was denied to her family and she's just been killing people willy-nilly-nilly in the hopes that that would happen. And now she has to kill Christina Ricci. And at this point, I'd be like, hey, I just want to live. Do you want the money? Like, I'll, I'll, I'll leave. I'll <laughs> sign literally any legal document right now yeah. if it means I get to leave. Now, granted, Miranda Richardson has let her hair down literally and is now full on crazy. So she probably wouldn't take that. But I feel like it's not wise for Christina not to just offer. Yeah. The offer should be there, even if it's going to be. Definitely. Also, at this point, let's mention um, the Kid Watson. Who, oh, Kid Watson. Who has done most of the hard work during this entire film. Like, like real Watson. Like, Johnny Depp is just sort of off being a bit useless and trying to flirt with Christina. and He's Johnny Depping all Yeah, him. like, he's he's not really doing very much. But the kid is doing all of the hard work, including sneaking in behind Miranda Richardson into the windmill before Johnny Depp gets there to try and rescue... Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> try and rescue uh, Christina, Katrina, whatever. Um, and then they sort of like they get out of the windmill just in time for Johnny Depp to turn up and be like back in the windmill everybody <laughs> so they get in the windmill and they're being chased by the horseman who Miranda Richardson has summoned using his skull which when he turns up at the windmill she hides behind her back because she's a sniggy bitch anywho the uh, very martial arty swordsman chases them through the windmill which then bursts into flames because it's full of non-safety matches and 90% proof alcohol uh, and then they get outside by climbing down the sails from the top and then the windmill blows up don't know what Miranda Richardson is doing at that point probably standing further away yeah because she does come back then we have for a second just some scenes from the Fast and the Furious 1800 drift yeah because there's a carriage and horse chase through the woods which is boring and then they end up at the Tree of the Dead. Yes. And then Miranda Richardson turns up with the horseman's head. And we had a little discussion about this. Focus move, Miranda. <laughs> like, because there's there's two possible interpretations. One is, why did you bring the head with, with you? you? I mean, it is in a bag. It is in a bag, but it's a, it's a very valuable item at this point. Yes. Maybe it's best hidden somewhere. Now, I thought that she needed to have it with her in order to control the horseman. But, I've just remembered, she didn't have it with her when... You know, she faked her death in yeah. front of Michael Gambon, which she didn't really need to do. She didn't know he was going to tell anyone. No. Anywho, so presumably she doesn't need to have it with her, but she now has it with her for plot reasons. Which then made me think, okay, so if you need to have it, why did you go to the tree where the horseman is buried? Also, she's wearing like one of those old tiny big skirts. Why isn't she keeping under the skirt? No one's going to check under no. that. Instead, she leaves it on the horse and then walks away from it to gloat. So Johnny Depp just kind of grabs it and is like, Horseman, catch! And then we have some more terrible CGI. Yep. Um, and then instead of killing Christina, which is what he was summoned to do, this one last hit. Um, <laughs> yeah. One more hit and I'm out of the game. Yeah, John it, Wick won he... when he gets his skull back. <laughs> so yeah, he gets the head, puts it back on, and then Turns into regenerates into Christopher Walken again. AKA the penguin. Yeah. And then gets like, he decides instead of killing Christina like he's supposed to, he picks up her stepmom and like, her tongue, possibly. I thought he just made out with her for a bit. It was very bloody. It was a lot. There, of blood there was terror. a lot of like he had the pointy teeth, so maybe he was just supposed to be like biting <sighs> her a lot. But I took it to like I guess that would make if if she has the power to like summon him, and it was her making noise. Maybe he that took her tongue. He took her tongue. That's, That's a cooler I explanation. I, I don't know if Tim Burton put that much thought into it, but 
That's okay, because like when it was a kiss, I was like, ew, horseman, consent is important. But if he's just cutting out her tongue, that's fair. Yeah, just using his teeth to do it. Yeah, it's a bit gross, but unhygienic. Also, he never says anything, which I think is because Christopher Walken has big fake teeth in, and also because it's scary, which I kind of... Although, I don't know why you would hire Christopher Walken, of all people, for a non-speaking. But to be fair, I think he does pull it off quite well in, in terms he, of like. He scary, absolutely but... does, but it's not exactly what he's known for. Like, he's known for speeches and. Yeah, but so is Jeff Goldblum. That's like something he should let yeah. us <laughs> Anywho, Mike Goldblum can think aside. What happens is he picks up Miranda Richardson on the horse, either makes out with her without her consent, or, much more PC Lee, rips her tongue out with his teeth, and then dives the horse into the tree of the dead, and it goes like through a big bloody wormhole and disappears, presumably into hell. And then all that's left sticking out is Miranda Richardson's hand, which slowly beckons with one very clean finger. And then Johnny Depp faints again because he's a massive pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Smash cut. We're now back in New York, except now instead of being all foggy and smoggy and black and smoky, it's white and snowy. And everyone else is wearing white except Christina, who's dressed like a humbug. Because it's a Tim Burton movie, in case you've forgotten. He fucking loves Someone humbugs. has to wear black and white stripes. <laughs> yep. So anyway, Beetlejuice and Donny Donny Depp <laughs> Donny have moved Donny on. Dop. <laughs> Beetlejuice and Donny Dop have moved into this like house in New York, and they brought that little orphan boy from the village with him, probably as a butler, because I guess servitude is better for him than just being an orphan. Uh, and he's like, "It's a new century, and we're all enlightened now, except that she is still a witch." And no this, further explanation is, is made about this. I want to see the follow-up movie where she's a witch. Witches take Manhattan. Yeah. Versus Godzilla. Ah! <laughs> so, in a final witch count, because I've reviewed a lot of films for this fucking channel so far, and a lot of the ones that have witch in the title do not have a witch in the movie. This film does not have witch in the title. It's ostensibly about a headless horseman, which is the story, because there are no witches in the original story. It has so many witches. Yes. So count them off. We got Witch in a Cave. Yep. We got Johnny Depp's mom, yep. Mrs. Dot. <laughs> We've got Christina Aguilera. <laughs> we got Miranda Richardson. We've got potentially the midwife as well because she is a midwife, but she does she's pictured with a lot of herbs. And yeah, herbs she gives and... out some herbs, and also she has a lantern which has cutouts of witches on it. Like so, she's she's maybe not a witch, but she is very sort of mystical aligned. We have four and a half witches yeah. in this movie. <laughs> Which is insane, and I love it. And I love all of the different witches and how witchy vibes mm. is, because not just you've got his mum, who he describes as, like, um, a woman of nature, uh, an innocent spirit, and she's, like, out in nature and playing with plants and drawing pictures and stuff and flying in the air in a Beckonese commercial. Yes. Because there was a lot of flying there. And then you've got Christina, who is wearing a star-shaped necklace. Mm. Amazing. Who has, like, a spell book, and who you do see at one point make him, like, a little hot, linked us out of a crow foot which i think like a lot of her practice seems like it's portrayed very much as like a studied thing yeah compared to like cave witch who seems to just sort of like throw stuff together and yeah she's the jamie oliver kind of like just a dab of this yeah. a drizzle of that whereas christina is more like a kind of mary berry <laughs> yeah she's perfected some recipes yes. and she was and she says that the books that she has were her mother's yes so that's a fifth witch that's a fifth witch yeah five and a half witches my friends <laughs> which is you know, pretty good. And uh, then you've got uh, Miranda Richardson, who seems... I've just said her name wrong as well. Yep. Fuck my life. <laughs> uh, who seems more into, like, the dark arts, but mm -hmm. then it seems to be because she's drawn this power from Satan. Because she yes. says she sold her soul to Satan for the ability to bring the horseman back yeah. to do her bidding. So that the, there's a lot of different kinds of witchcraft, some beneficial, some negative, and witchcraft itself is not really seen as the most evil thing in the film. It's something that evil people and good people use for different reasons. Yeah. And again, going back to Kid Watson, who I think was actually my favourite character in the film, um, he has a moment where he's like, yes, she was a witch, but she was a good witch. And Johnny Depp's like, but logically, if she's a witch and there's some weird, like, dead ghost running around killing people, you have to presume it's the witch that did it. And it's just logical. Cool. And the kid's like, then you've been bewitched by logic, sir. No witchcraft. And I was like, this Owned kid. <laughs> by an 11-year-old with no parents. <laughs> this kid is the only person talking to any sense of this one. I love that. The thing they don't have at the end of the film, to be honest, is like a scene where he goes back to London. Not London. 
New York. Fucking hell. Um, when he goes back to New York, and you never really see him like own Christopher Reeve and mm-hmm. that guy from New Tricks, uh, and like impose like good police work on them. You don't even get to find out if he's still a policeman by the end of it. All. Yeah, actually, yeah. you you would think like an adventure like that would possibly change a person and maybe be like, you know what? Maybe I'm gonna be more like a private detective or a ghost hunter. <gasps> you know what or we something. call it? If they made like a kind of The Mummy Returns, like two with him and the kid and uh, Christina Ricci, and they like go off and hunt like other yeah spooky stories, that would be so cool. I I need more of her. What what's the um? There's a there's a cryptid in New York. There's like a, a something that's supposed to live in. Oh, that's gonna bother me. The Central Park Squirrel Man. <laughs> No, there's like is um, it the pigeon lady from Home Alone? Too? No, it's it's. I want to say the Red Devil, but I don't think that's right. Jersey Devil. Yeah, but that's New Jersey. Yeah, but there's there's, <laughs> there's a similar version in New York. Ah, um, you think you're dead? No, but yeah, like just going around America hunting cryptids. So how do you? I mean, I've made you watch a lot of shit films mm. over at Burnett Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of shit films. So how do you think this compares to one, other shit films that I've made you watch, and two, to other films about witches that we've seen together, like, like The Craft, Witch of Eastwick, all those kind of like well-known films about witches? I did like that The Witchcraft wasn't like a major, like it wasn't the point of the film, almost, like that there was witchcraft and there was a witch who was bad, who was doing the thing, but it wasn't like... It's a sink. Yeah. It, it wasn't the, the entire point of the film is about doing witchcraft. I kind of wish it had been a little bit, just because it had that main character syndrome problem of, like, the, the guy you've picked to be the main character is the least interesting one in the story. That's true. But I think it kind of gains from having that, because it's nice to have a character who... Because if everyone's doing witchcraft in a film, it kind of loses some of its special mystique. Mm. Whereas, like, I think the craft benefits from the fact that, like, Sarah doesn't know anything about witchcraft when she, like, comes into oh, it. there's definitely a benefit of having an initiate. Yeah. Like, the, the one who, if the audience doesn't know anything, that's how they find out about it. And Johnny Depp knows nothing. But Johnny Depp knows too little. Like, he knows I think too little That's the problem. Sarah. Like, if he... Like, so the original legend, he was, a, like, a superstitious school teacher. You could have had, like, the school teacher moves to town and all the children have, like, all these stories about, like, the witch of the village and the witch in the woods and all this sort of thing. And He gets, like, intrigued and worried about that. And, like, th- there's a way in where he's not the guy who's there going for the first half of the film, like, I believe in science and reason and I'm basically just here to be a stooge until I realise that magic is real. Like, See, I kind of <laughs> like it because he kind of goes into it like logic and reason is right. And then he gets proved kind of wrong. But then also at the same time, at the end, he's kind of saved by logic. Because it's like the logic of how the world actually yeah. is involving witchcraft. Which I, I, I kind of like it. And um, it's probably one of my favourite Tim Burton films. I can't really think of another one that I like more. Mm, I think that's fair. Like, there's definitely... There's... It's, it's tricky because it's not so much like the film is fine it is just like ted mosby syndrome where if i could just have done without the main character i would have probably enjoyed it a bit more um, i think i would enjoy it less if there wasn't so much humor at his expense mm, as a character that's true i like that yeah i like the fact that he gets completely schooled by christina and not really yeah yeah I, I will say like i feel like they overdid the whole and then he gets blood in his face oh yeah no. that that gag gets used like that's like times? the vomit canon yeah. for like comedy films. It's just blood in front of your face. Like, there's, it's mildly funny one of the times, but like generally it's not really needed. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good. But I think in general it's a really well-made movie. I like mm. the mystery plot. The mystery plot is carried off quite well. And I like all the different witchy elements and all the different witchy characters in it. It's kind of steeped in witchcraft. Yeah. And I will say, like, given that the original short story, like, there's there's not a lot in the short story, so to try and extrapolate from that into a movie, yeah, I think they did a really interesting job with it. Uh, using a lot of the same characters, the same places, the same mm. kind of lore, but then layering it over this really quite in-depth mystery story. Yeah. So yeah, definitely recommend that one if you're looking for a movie that has witches in mm. it. 
unlike many of the so-called <laughs> witch films. And uh, I hope you like Van Der Beek here because we're going to do some other reviews just yes. while I'm visiting and I brought my shoebox full of shit movies. Yeah. Um, so uh, we'll be seeing a little bit more of Van Der Beek. Anywho, with that over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so fucking tired. Anywho, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe and do all that nonsense that I meant to remind you to do. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.